Want to know how to level up extra fast? Or the absolute best way to get the rarest fruit? Here are 175 blocks for things you probably didn't know. Everyone knows that using cheats will get you banned. But did you know that you can get banned even if you use cheats on a private server? Even if you're the only one playing that server, you can still get banned. And if you use cheats back in 2021, but you don't use it anymore, admins can actually still ban you if they ever come across any proof that you did it. This glitch will definitely get you banned if the admin catches you using it. It's called the invisible glitch and it's easy to execute. All you need to do is get a portal fruit, press X, and stand still. Once the ability turns off, you will remain invisible as long as you don't move. There's so many ways to prank people with this one, but unfortunately it's not allowed. Next time someone kills you five times in a row, think again before cussing him out in chat. This can easily get you banned and it's definitely not worth it. For every swear word an admin catches you saying, you will receive one warning. Once you get 15 warnings, you will be banned. Wait, does this mean I can swear 14 times without getting banned? Some insane glitches are completely allowed, but this one is bannable, and I'll explain why. This glitch makes you way too fast. All you need to do is get a spirit fruit, and spam click while the spirits are on the blue side. Then switch to another fruit, and you will notice a slight change in your speed. But if you repeat this a couple of times, you will become way too fast. Glitches like this one aren't actually bannable, but if the admin catches you speeding around, you'll have no proof that you're only glitching, and you'll think you're cheating and will get you banned. I think I'd rather just use Buddha. We all can't stand this guy anymore because he almost always disappoints us. I'm obviously talking about the blocks fruit dealer, who's the main fruit seller in the whole game. He's called a dealer because he never has the same or all of the fruits in stock. Each fruit has a different chance to be in stock, but no matter what, he'll always have a minimum of three fruits in stock at any given moment, and two of them are always rocking in spin fruit. You can buy a fruit that's in stock an unlimited number of times, but in case you're paying with Robux, he will somehow get that fruit in stock just for you. Not only that, but if you buy the fruit with Robux, you'll have it permanently which means you will always be able to equip it, but many of you don't know that his stock changes every four hours, and that you can find him at seven different locations in the game. But what do you do if you want to get a fruit ASAP but have no money, a bad fighting style, no fruits or anything? If you said beg for fruits, you're not wrong. That's another way to get fruits and blocks fruits, but does it actually work? Well, it depends on how you do it, but you're basically testing your luck. So what's the best way to beg for fruits? Your chances of someone giving you a fruit are higher if you're in the second seed dressed as a new player. Being in the second seed is important because people there are richer, and dressing as a new player, well, that's self-explanatory. Once you're there, head over to Blocks Fruit Gacha and wait for players to roll fruits. When someone comes, the chances of them rolling an unwanted fruit are super high. So all you need to do is start spamming, please bro, I need that, and they're probably going to give it to you. Go and test this. Who knows, maybe you'll even get a Buddha. Okay, maybe not a fruit that good. But if you're willing to gamble and simply buying a fruit of your choice is too boring for you, don't worry. Just head over to the jungle, cafe, or mansion where you'll find a Blocks Fruit Gacha. He sells you a random fruit once you pay, but the price always depends because it's calculated according to your level. You need to be at least level 50 in order to purchase a random fruit from this guy, and the price of fruit for level 50 players is 32,350 belly. But if you're not sure how much you're gonna pay, here's how the price is calculated. Take your level, so let's say 50, and subtract 1, then multiply that number by 150. So in this case, it's 49 times 150, which is 7,350, and then just add 25,000. This would be the best way to get fruits if there was no time limitation. You can't just buy fruit after fruit, you have to wait two whole hours after each purchase. Even though it's one of the most fun ways to get fruits, the chances of getting a good one are lower compared to its spawn chance. However, don't stop rolling the fruits because once you get a fruit that's worth a million belly or more, you'll get a title luck of the draw, which is super cool. Wait to hear that some people still search for fruit. Searching for fruits is the worst way to get fruits in the whole game, especially if you're doing it without a fruit notifier. A fruit spawns in the game every hour, which means 20 fruits spawn in one server a day. But on the weekends, 32 fruits spawn in one server in a day. The main problem with this method is that you can't know where the fruit is without a notifier. And even once you spend 2,700 Robux and get it, someone will almost always be ahead of you. This is just the worst way to grind for your fruits. Don't make the same mistakes I did. I never stored any of my fruits in the beginning because they were so cheap and easy to obtain. But when I reached the third C, I still never stored any of my fruits until one player killed me when I had Leopard in my hand. I ended up losing that fruit, but since that day, I always store my fruits no matter if it's a Kilo or a Buddha. This is one of the most stupid mistakes players make. It's leaving a game with items, and I'm not talking about swords or guns that stay once you join back. I'm talking about fruits, keys, and any other items that disappear once you leave the game. That's another reason why you should always store your fruits. You probably already know that combat fighting style is the style you get when you first join the game, and what you should never do is stick to it. Literally any other fighting style is better than combat. For example, you can get a dark step for relatively cheap as a beginner, which is far better than combat. The only reason why people decide to stick to combat 
combat is because once you switch it for another fighting style, you can never retrieve it. So it's a flex to still have a combat and be at max level. But believe me, not switching your fighting style will slow down your leveling up process. There are some pretty useless items in Blocks Fruits, such as Usopes hat or barriers. But did you know that guns are literally useless too? There is absolutely no gun that will win in a fight against a solid fruit. So yeah, just stay away from guns and don't pretend to be Usopp from One Piece. I bet you did know that you can lie down in the chair in Blocks Fruits. In order to do so, you'll need a God Human C move. Just press C while standing really close to a chair, let off, and voila! That will actually become your regular sitting. Just make sure not to fall asleep. Did you know that there's a hidden key in Blocks Fruits? This key is a rare drop obtained by either killing the Awakened Ice Admiral or killing one of the two NPCs at the Ice Castle. But the chances of them dropping it are really low. 2% low to be exact. The hidden key is used to obtain the Rengoku Sword and then a Samurai title by equipping it. You definitely didn't know about this one. If you hold Dragon Breath Z move while entering a raid, you will get teleported way far from the raid area once you enter it. This is a glitch or a secret made on purpose. The one thing I really love about Dragon Breath is the Dragonborn title you get once you buy it. I want to know why this ability is so underrated and why no one is talking about it. Rubber Slingshot ability literally transforms you into Spider-Man. It allows you to hook onto buildings and pull up to them, which makes it perfect for when you're being chased by a player that's way stronger than you, since with this, you can easily escape him. Most of you didn't know that Magma used to have a flying move. It was the same thing as controllable light fly, but way slower. Still, many players used it back in the day, especially to travel to other islands or escape from enemies. As you flew with this ability, you used to leave a trail of magma underneath your feet, which looked pretty cool. However, this was removed when Magma V2 came into the game. No matter how new the game is to you, you obviously know that you can't go in the second seat if you're still in the first seat, nor in the third seat if you're still in the second seat, or first. But back in 2021, when the third seat was added, players found a glitch that let you get in the third seat without a needed level. All you had to do is travel to this one location that was in the third C from the second C, exit the game, and join the friends game that was in the third C. And there you go. Now you're officially, but unofficially in the third C. How cool is that? YouTubers are happy that this one changed. We all know that when you want to buy a fruit using belly, you have to wait for it to be in stock. But back in the day, you had to wait for it to be in stock even if you were buying it with Robux. This made it super difficult for players to get all the fruits they needed. I'm glad they changed this one. If you're a new player, you definitely don't know who Santa Claus was. Santa Claus was an NPC that was added to the game every Christmas. He used to sell limited time accessories and a secret boat that you also didn't know existed. Obviously, the boat was a literal sleigh, and it's one of the rarest items to have in Blocks Fruits. Along with him, the new currency was added too. Candies. Each time you killed an NPC, you'd get candies, which you would later use to purchase items from Santa Claus. The first item you could buy from him was the elf hat, a hat that didn't have any special use. And the second item was Santa's hat, which was basically the same thing. And the third item was the bow. The first time Santa Claus appeared in the game was in the first Christmas event. Update 13 to be more precise, but he was removed in the very next update. But he was added again in update 17, but removed once again in the next update. Drop a like if you'd like to meet Santa Claus. For update 20, Blocks Fruits developers really said let's rework everything, which is why they changed most, if not all sorts in this update. I'm not talking about only the design, but also their skill sets as well as animations that play out for each skill. They look way better now and will have your character looking like a pro. So try those out with the swords you have laying around, even if you thought they weren't that good. You might like them now, who knows? Another great addition is a brand new island that has been added to the third C. It's called Tiki Outpost and it's filled with a bunch of new NPCs. Five to be more precise. You can grind on it only if you're above level 2450. There are four enemies on this island Island called Isle Outlaw, Island Boy, Isle Champion, and Sunkissed Warriors. It's basically the final island in the whole game. Stick to the end of the video to find out what you can do in it. You might think, oh, they only added one new island, but you probably didn't know they reworked some of the old islands as well. The majority of these island reworks have been done for the islands in the first and second sea, with their overall quality now being much better, which is to make sure that new players enjoy the game even more than before. Even though some of the changes didn't appear yet, it's expected that the majority of them will become visible later in the coming months. We all know that the level cap before this update was 2,450. In fact, it stayed the same for almost an entire year since update 17.3.5 came out. But in update 20, it was increased by 100. So now the current level cap is 2,550. Imagine being the first one to reach that level. Even a noob can bust this myth because all you need is a Kilo Fruit. The myth says that if you use Kilo Z move, you will be able to hover over the sea and not die. And what? This was actually true. This myth says that if you get frozen by the ice fruit, you can simply teleport out using portal. Wait, 
game. What? That actually worked. Well, good to know that freezing someone is useless if they have a portal. So some players are saying that they walked on lava using Buddha and somehow survived. Honestly, I don't really believe this one, but let's give it a try. Yeah, as I expected, you'll lose your health, but in a weird way because for a second you stop losing health and then you continue losing it. This seems to be some sort of bug, but that myth is busted. There's a myth saying you roll better fruits at nighttime than daytime. So now it's daytime and let's see what we roll. Okay, that wasn't great, but not too bad either. Now we have to wait for nighttime and while we're waiting, I'll go try and make some friends. All right, it's nighttime and I didn't make any friends. But let's see if we roll a better fruit. Wait a second, this myth is completely false. If you're a new player, there's no way you know about spectator mode. Spectator mode gives you the ability to fly your camera through the map. And this feature was so useful and overpowered. You were literally able to go from island to island and see if a fruit spawns somewhere. The command to get into this mode was control shift P. But unfortunately it was removed and nowadays only admins are able to get into spectator mode. All the players that first launched the game after update 20 was out will never know how bad kilo fruit was. It somehow managed to survive four years in the game and now it's been switched out for a new fruit called rocket. Kilo cost only $5,000 and it was usually the first fruit you obtained. It was literally a symbol for being poor in blocks fruits and many players used it to buy raid. Most of Kilo's moves were AoE and they weren't very useful. So while it's a good thing it got removed, I'm still sad it's gone. Throughout the game's development, developers added a bunch of codes. For those who don't know, codes give you things like double XP, a stat reset, or a single belly. But many of you don't know that a lot of codes got removed from the game. And these are just some of those that got removed. RIP to them. If you're an OG player, you'll know that the starter menu used to look way different back in the day. The characters representing each side are now different. But can you guess why? If you said to make the game look more appealing, you're half right. But the main reason why the characters were switched, especially on the pirate side, is because the pirate was represented by Buggy the Clown. Buggy the Clown is one of the most known characters from the One Piece anime, and One Piece almost sued Blocks Fruits because of this. I'm starting to see why they removed it. If an admin ever catches you doing something that's causing the server to lag, you will receive a warning. But the next time the admin catches you doing the same thing, you can say bye bye to your account because you're definitely getting banned. Just how any other type of bad speech isn't tolerated, threatening isn't too. If you ever threaten someone to harm them in game or even worse in real life, you will get banned. I once threatened my friend that I'll come over to his house and trash his PC. And guess what? I got banned. I'm kidding, obviously. We all know I don't have any friends. I know there are phone blocks fruits players watching this video, so here's something for you guys too. The roller donut ability from the dough fruit will get you glitched so much you'll end up being teleported far away. I don't know how this glitch isn't more known since it happens to phone players all the time, but why is it bannable? Because not only it does this, but it also sometimes makes the player fly. Admins don't want to hear any excuses once they see you levitating in the air. Buckle up, this is a really weird one. Did you know that if you pick up a fruit a player is standing on, you'll get banned? What? How? There's this glitch that shows a player picking up the fruit another player is standing on, and as he picks it up, the other player literally disappears. I think he went into his inventory. Oxfruit's map is pretty large, and new players tend to have a hard time finding the next locations they should visit. But that's because they don't listen to the compass. Compass is literally your best friend in Blocks Fruits. And yet, I often see players completely forgetting about it. You can find your compass on the left side of your screen, and it basically tells you where the next NPC you should visit is located, or where your next quest is. All you need to do is hop in a boat, and travel in the direction the red needle is pointing towards. New players, listen up! If you have a fruit equipped, and you eat another one, you will end up losing the fruit you had previously equipped. It's impossible to retrieve it, and the only way to get an infinite amount of fruit is to buy a permanent fruit add-on. I didn't know this and I ended up losing a fruit when I was a newbie which cost me some time. This next one is a mistake I see a lot of people making. Not setting your spawn point. I know you hate dying on the island where you're grinding and then getting respawned at a whole other island that's miles away from your task. Because of this, setting your spawn point is something you should always keep doing because it saves you so much time. It instantly spawns you exactly where you need to be so you won't have to travel to that place anymore. I often see new players trying to level up by grinding at the same island. There are cases where players literally get from level 10 to level 200 just by grinding on the jungle island. And this is something you should definitely stay away from. Not only is it a rookie mistake, but players actually think they will level up faster because it's easier to kill enemies, and they can get more kills in a shorter time. Just because it's way harder to kill the enemies at the same level as you doesn't mean you will level up slower. And in fact, you'll actually level up much quicker. If you got yourself a VIP server just so you could farm some fruits, there's one thing you should know. Specifically on a VIP server, only two devil fruits will spawn in the first two hours and then they stop spawning. So you'll have to reset the game if you want some more to spawn. So you know how many games have jetpacks? Well, Blocks Fruits has one too. If you equip the now removed Kilo Fruit and then use its F ability, 
you will be able to go on forever into the sky. This literally doesn't stop. Well, I guess it does, because since update 20, Kilo doesn't exist anymore. Did you know that lava doesn't melt the fruit? We all know that lava can kill you. But if you drop a physical fruit into lava, it won't melt. So next time you're worried and you're accidentally gonna drop your fruit while walking near lava, don't worry. The only thing you should worry about is to not drop yourself into lava. But if you have magma fruit, why worry? How many times did I say worry? I'm sure none of you have ever tested this one. You know how Doe's F ability keeps you safe from water damage? Well, there's something it doesn't protect you from, and that's fall damage. You will still take fall damage when transformed into a donut, but don't worry, it's not fatal. With my luck though, I transform back into a normal character a millisecond before hitting the ground. Observation is an ability that lets you dodge incoming attacks from enemies, see enemies through solid surfaces or anywhere in range, see them from a distance, and even see how much health and energy they have. Back in the day, observation used to look completely different, and I think it looks a bit more realistic in the old version. We all know that Buddha today is considered to be overpowered. It's the best grinding fruit in the game, and if you want to reach max level, you must use it. But did you know back in the day, Buddha was even more OP? And there was a little speed glitch you could do with it. Today, when you use Buddha's transformation, your speed increases by only 15%, but you probably didn't know unless you're OG, that back in the day, Buddha's transformation used to increase your speed by 60%. I think that old Buddha would shame light in a race. If you used it today, no enemy would be able to land a hit on you. I think I now know why it was nerfed. I bet you didn't know that water texture back in the day was different. It was more realistic, much more blue, and more still. Nowadays, we have that wavy texture, which definitely suits the game better. But I'm sure there are OG players that miss the old one. Me personally, I love the fact they updated the water. It doesn't matter if you're a new or OG player. In both cases, I know you love the sky jump ability. Today, with the sky jump ability, you will get 10 jumps. But this was before when the ability was first added to the game, when the number of jumps was unlimited. This literally meant you could jump as high as you can in the sky, as long as you had enough energy to do so. Imagine being able to get to Sky Islands just by jumping. It's obvious why they removed this from the game. Literally too overpowered. The first and most obvious change you will notice as soon as you join the game is new fruit design. Not only do fruits look different, but they're literally animated, and the graphics look so good. Each fruit obviously has an animation that represents it, and the most interesting ones are definitely Phoenix and Spider Fruit. Phoenix flaps its wings, and the spider fits into the Halloween vibe. Oh, and Spring Fruit? It bounces! Speaking of new fruits, the biggest change Update 20 brought was definitely two new fruits. The first one is called Mammoth, a beast type fruit that costs 2.7 million belly. It's mythical and its abilities sound pretty interesting. The first ability is called Ancient Cutter and it turns you into a mammoth covered in a dark aura, then stomps on the ground and sends three large slashes. It's similar to Dragon's Transformed X move, through the ground and air. This move can even be used in the air and it looks pretty interesting. The second move transforms you into the same mammoth, but instead of stomping on the ground, it dashes forward at a high speed and when you hit an enemy, it launches them upwards, which looks super funny. The third move is similar to the second one and the only difference is that it doesn't transform you into a mammoth and when the enemy is hit, they're slammed down. The fourth move transforms you into an armored mammoth, which reduces damage by 50%. It also gives you a different jump and dash animation, along with the ability to deal damage by falling to the ground when airborne. This is definitely the best move. And the fifth move is basically a huge jump similar to Buddha's C move. Also, the longer you hold it, the further you jump. And best of all, you can literally hold it infinitely. The second fruit is called Sound Fruit, a natural type of fruit that costs 1.7 million belly and has been classified as legendary. Sound is a great choice for both grinding and PvP, and all of its abilities are AoE. Its first ability is called Rhapsody Notes, and it shoots out three projectile notes on the first use horizontally, five on the second use horizontally, and five on the third use vertically where the cursor aims at. You'll get used to it as you start using this move, and all of the notes explode once they hit the target, which deals pretty nice damage. The second move is called Fortissimo, and it deals an area of effect damage through a cone-shaped note attack. The third move is called Symphonic Radiance, but I'd call it Disco Ball because it literally spawns a disco ball that fires beams which auto-aim at all nearby enemies at a large range. Good thing I attended all my hip-hop classes. Once it shoots all the beams, the disco ball fires itself to where the cursor is aiming at and explodes on impact. One more thing that makes this move overpowered is that every time a beam hits your enemy, the damage is multiplied by 0.85. The next 
Max Moon shoots five small and then five large projectiles, which also explode on impact. The larger projectiles will literally spawn a black hole and start sucking in all the nearby enemies while dealing damage for a short time after exploding. And the final move is called Prestissimo. What's going on with these names? Fortissimo, Prestissimo, Sparkyissimo? Maybe I should make my own fruit. I'll ask my friends what they think about that. Oh, yeah. Anyways, the Prestissimo move is a flight move that regenerates tempo meter, but stops health and energy generation when it's activated. Overall, this fruit is super good. But beside the fruit changes, there are also a few other minor fruit changes that happened. The first of them is Kilo. Well, was Kilo. Now it's Rocket Fruit. Yep, you heard that. I don't know how Kilo managed to survive four years in the game being the worst fruit, but it was finally time to switch it. Kilo's new name is Rocket, and its abilities have completely changed. It's still the cheapest fruit in the game, though. The first ability is a rocket that launches from your hand and deals AoE damage and a knockback. The second ability is just an airstrike, and the third ability is some sort of quick jump, which also deals AoE damage once you hit the ground. The last move is a flight move, which has a cool animation. Considering it's from the cheapest fruit, you do a backflip and fly off with an explosive trail. New players definitely won't be complaining about this fruit, but it wasn't the only fruit that got changed. Paw fruit is now called pain fruit, but that's really the only big change, as its abilities are basically the same. Some other fruits got minor changes, such as new icons and in-game visuals, but nothing as crazy as rocket fruit. We all know that you can use a roller donut to roll on the water and not take any damage, but there's a myth saying that if you fall from a huge height into the water with a roller donut, you'll actually take damage. Why is this true? It makes no sense. You probably didn't know about a rumor saying you can challenge Rip Indra to a rematch if you find his island in the second sea. Before you set sail to find him, just know that it's extremely hard to find him, but also to beat him. Well, impossible to be more precise. Let's see if we can find the island. And wait, there he is. That's Rip Indra. Now I can start a rematch and get myself killed. Someone told me in the comments that if you spawn a control area and then use control's X move while standing near the area's wall, the control area will fart. Let's test it out. What? That's a stinky myth and it's true. If you have a leopard fruit, you'll definitely want to test this one. After you transition into leopard, the fruits you're holding are supposed to be in your pockets. I doubt this one will work because honestly, I don't see any pockets here. But let's see. What? How is that possible? I guess this leopard has some sort of hidden pockets because this myth is true. This is the most useless way to gain fruits in the entire game. It's not even fruits, but a fruit, a single fruit that costs 97 Robux. And no, it's not some expensive high value fruit. It's a rocket fruit. You can buy this 97 Robux rocket fruit from a Wenlock, which is basically a doghouse located in the kingdom of Rose, literally right beside the arrow NPC. Once you get there and talk to a dog, he'll woof woof you into buying this fruit, saying you can trade it for a special microchip. If you buy or have already bought this fruit, you're either too rich or a newbie with zero experience who has exactly 97 Robux on his account. Moving on to the next method of gaining new fruits, here's a method that will either grant you some nice fruits or just lose you money. We're talking about trading, and what's so special in Blocks Fruits about trading is that you can not only trade fruits, but also game passes. I personally like this because it allows players who don't have any Robux to get game passes by grinding hard. There are only two places where you can trade in the game, and those are cafe and mansion. Once you're there, just look for tables with two chairs. Those are usually trading places, but there's something you must know about trading. You can't trade a rocket fruit for a leopard. There's something called price difference, and if your fruit is 40% more expensive than the fruit of the guy you're trading with, the game will not allow you to complete the trade. None of you probably know that a while ago you were able to stop the combat and save your life. How you ask? Just run back to the safe zone, and your enemy won't be able to hit you. This was changed in update 6, and since then safe zones are ignored if combat has already been initiated with another player. Do you think this should come back, or should it stay the way it is? Did you know that way back in time there was actually a server browser? You were able to join servers you had never joined before, and filter them by total bounty, region, and server name. Unfortunately, this feature got completely removed for unknown reasons, probably due to the difficulty of moderating those servers. One of the craziest things you could do a few years ago was to go to the third seat even as a new player. This allowed new players to level up crazy fast, but the developers attempted to patch the glitch in update 16, but their patch was unsuccessful. However, players under level 1500 can no longer deal any damage whatsoever to the Indra boss. Do you know what's the easiest way to find Mirage Island? Well, I don't, but I know that back in time, you used to need a full moon in order to find the Mirage Island, which is a special island that functions apart from all the other islands. It's also special because advanced fruit dealer and blue gear for race awakening can be found there. And luckily nowadays you only need nighttime in order to find this island. If you're a completely new player without any knowledge in blocks fruits, I recommend you do some research before buying your first fruit. I know that once you open the fruit dealer menu for the first time, you'll feel like you absolutely 
absolutely have to buy a fruit and you'll probably spend your money on a bad and useless fruit. Instead of doing this, do some research and wait for a good fruit. This will speed up your leveling process so much. Many people used to choose a melee instead of a fruit in the first seed, which is reasonable, but it's still a mistake. Instead of melee, you should get yourself an elemental fruit, which is way better. With an elemental fruit, you will be able to dodge an enemy's attack if you surpass their level. And I think that's a great advantage for new players. The biggest mistake you can make is when just getting to the second C immediately heading over to start a raid. I understand you can't wait to get in a raid, but believe me when you just get to the second C from the first C, raids are going to be way more difficult than you expect, and you probably won't make it. Continue to grind for some time before starting a raid. This way you'll be absolutely sure to win your first raid. Also, don't awaken useless fruits. Just awaken only fruits you're sure you'll be able to use in the future. If you've got a bit of spare robux, it would be a good idea to buy some add-ons. Some of the best add-ons you can buy in blocks fruits are definitely double money and double mastery, but you have to be careful when buying add-ons, because there are some bad ones I see people buying such as fast boats, double drop chance, and even dark blade. Alright, dark blade isn't that bad if you really want it, and I can't tell you what to spend your money on. That's just my advice. Everyone knows there's not really a way to make your boat faster, except there actually is. This is something no one knows about, a turbo boat. You'll need a god human sea move for this one. Get a boat and stand close to a sea, then press C. Sit in the boat and just let off C. Your boat will literally get launched. I bet you didn't know this one. If you and your friend are flying through the sky using venom and light, you can actually collide with each other. You probably didn't know that there's a sword that can be awakened just like fruits can be. I'm talking about saber sword. All you have to do is kill someone that's the same level and same bounty as you, and you will be able to awaken it. Pretty cool. Also, the only way to get a saber sword is by doing the saber expert puzzle. Most of you still don't know that there's a way to stand on lava without any protection or abilities, and somehow not die? This sounds too good to be true, but it's kind of useless. If you teleport using a portal directly on lava, you will be able to stand on it and not take any damage. But that's only true under one condition. You can't move, which is why I said it's useless. But something even weirder is that if you do the same but on water, you will take damage and eventually die. The next one is something new players wish for. There was a glitch that was so OP it allowed you to combine two fruits at the same time. You first had to use the transformation fruit, most of the players used leopard, and then sit on a chair. Sitting on a chair after you transform was a must. Then just get another fruit from a dealer, eat it, and boom! Now you have the speed and health of a leopard, and any other abilities from any other fruit. There is one fruit in blocks fruits that was removed, but the chances you have it are big. I'm talking about gum gum fruit, or should I say rubber fruit? Yeah, back in the day rubber fruit used to be called gum gum. The moves basically remain the same, and I assume the name was changed due to copyrights, because One Piece also had a similar name fruit. Many of you like the design of a sea beast, but let me know what you think about the design of the old sea beast. Just take a look at it. Which one looks better to you? Comment down below. Only the most OG Blocks Fruits players remember this one. Did you know that back in the day when fruits were ball shaped, spring fruit was the only one that wasn't shaped like a ball. It looked like an actual spring, which looked cool if you ask me. The first and definitely most interesting thing you can do on Tiki Outpost is craft and enchant items. It's also one of the features added in update 20. It allows you to craft scrolls and enchant your swords by visiting the Dragon Talon Sage NPC, which can be found in the Tall Temple on the island. To enchant your swords, you need scrolls. And to make one scroll, you need three fool's gold and two shark tooth. There are six kind of scrolls, but at the moment the community has only found recipes for three of them. Common, rare, and legendary. When you first start crafting scrolls, you can only craft common scrolls. You unlock the ability to craft better ones the more you craft with the previous rarity. Enchanted swords will soon become a must-have. It gives you random bonuses to your weapon, ranging from increased elemental damage or drop rate, to getting vampiric, which heals you when you deal damage. But did you know that this update was super focused on seas? We got six new sea events including raids. The first one is called Treasure Island. It's one of the smallest islands in the game, and it spawns when players move far away from land. There are multiple versions of the Treasure Island, some of them being completely made of sand, some having only grass and dirt, and there's even a version that has both sand and grass with a tree. The second sea event is called Go Ship Raid, a sea event in which a few ships spawn and attack your ship with a cannon. These can only be damaged by AoE attacks, so choose the right fruit. The next new sea event is called Flying Piranhas, and this one is scary. The Piranha is a hostile NPC that spawns between 1 to 6 level sea meter. It has wings and can fly outside the water to attack your boat and use electricity based attacks. If you want to kill them, do so with Buddha, because they can get easily damaged with them once. But that's not as scary as the new Terror Shark, which is a level 2000 raid boss. They spawn between sea danger levels 2 to 6. Depending on which danger level you're in, the Terror Shark will be stronger and harder to beat. But don't go past level 5 because Terror Sharks that spawn 
spawn there are really OP, and you'll need your friends to help. It gives some pretty good rewards though, including up to 25,000 belly, and best of all, leveling you up no matter how high your level is. The next addition is Leviathan, and it's definitely one of the craziest enemies. It's a raid boss that can be found in the Frozen Dimension, and on top of the large building in the Tiki Outpost Island, there's an NPC called the Spy. He provides an origin of the Leviathan, as well as clues to summon it. The last one is called Rough Sea, a randomly spawned sea event that clears surrounding rocks, dims the area inside the sea, and spawns lightning that can damage players and their ships. At the moment, no one knows how we can stay safe from lightning, but hopefully we'll figure it out soon. But even with all these changes, it still feels like something's missing. A fighting style? It's definitely not that because believe it or not, Bloxfruit's developers also decided to add a new fighting style. It's called Sanguine Art, which is extremely powerful but really difficult to obtain. In order to get your hands on it, you must be on Tiki Island, which means that it's also the final fighting style in the game. On top of that, you must first get a Leviathan's Heart, which you can only get from the Leviathan Sea event. Then go to the basement of the main castle in Tiki Outpost, talk to Shafi, and give him Leviathan's Heart, 20 Demonic Wisps, 20 Vampire Fangs, and two dark fragments. Only then you will be able to pay 5 million belly and 5,000 fragments to finally obtain Sanguine Art Fighting Style. Speaking of how good it is, its Z ability launches you where you're aiming your cursor. If you hit your enemy, it'll unleash bat-like creatures on your enemy that will heal you while they deal damage to them. This may be my favorite one from this fighting style, because besides being great for fighting, it's also good for traveling. It drains your enemy's health, breaks instinct, and even has a slight aim assist. The X ability called Scarlet Terror launches 5 slash towards the cursor, leaving claw marks on the floor or walls. This ability has great range, and even greater combo potential. But get ready to hear the name of this last ability, Devourer of Worlds. It launches a dark red blast at the cursor, and when it hits your enemy, it causes four energy balls to spawn around the enemy, and then attack them. But in case you miss and hit no one, those four energy balls will turn into one large energy ball and attack the nearest player. At this point, it would be dumb to rework everything in the game and add new things, but then just leave the boats as they are. Luckily, now we have one new boat called Beast Hunter, and four reworked ones, Lantern, Guardian, Miracle, and Sentinel. The Beast Hunter is a legendary boat equipped with a harpoon that's able to pierce through Leviathan's hard ice and skin. This boat can be obtained by crafting it at the Beast Hunter NPC, and costs 20 Leviathan scales, 6 electric wings, 2 mutant teeth, 30 fool's gold, and 6 shark teeth. I know it seems pricey, but keep in mind that it's impossible to get Leviathan's heart without this boat. The next boat is reworked, and its name is Lantern, a large ship with two cannons on each side and a lantern in the front. It can be bought from the luxury boat dealer for 5,000 belly after you buy it from Cyborg for 1,500 fragments. This boat basically replaced a flower ship in this update and that's it. Next one is the Guardian, a boat that replaced Swan Boat and the only things changed were the size and the name. And the final boat that was reworked is a well-known speedboat, but instead of being named Speedboat, now it's called Miracle. This is an interesting one. A myth is circling around that if you use God Human Sea Move while sitting in a boat, you can actually launch it. Oh, if this one works, it's gonna be crit- What? No way! I can get a boat off the ground! This is a great way to prank noobs. Have you ever seen those rocks coming out of the ground from Race V4? I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that you have. And there's a myth that those become huge with Buddha. Alright, let's see if this one's true. And whoa, they're huge! Which makes this myth true. One myth says that you keep gear to aura even if you switch the fruit. But honestly, I already know this one's true. So let's test this one that says gear to aura makes you even faster. Let's race against this guy and see if it's true. And wait, we're not any faster. This one was definitely a bust. Buckle up because this one looks crazy. This myth says that you can spawn a phoenix ball if you use phoenix heal while sitting in a bow. And let's see if it works. Dang, not only does it work, but it's also stackable. It's safe to say that one works. Did you know that you used to be able to get banned in Bloxfords just by playing normally? Back in the day, the ban system worked so well that it banned every suspect. Many people reported they got banned for doing literally nothing. But thankfully, the ban system is updated and nowadays it's way harder to get banned. But what if you want to go even further? Instead of getting banned, get your account deleted. If you ever scam anyone in Bloxfruits, your whole Roblox account will get deleted. I think this one is fair because I literally hate scammers. Subscribe if you hate them too. This one is 100% bannable. It's called the Frozen Quiet Rush Glitch and it's most known as the Sus Glitch. In order to do this, you need to get a katana, open the inventory menu, hold Z skill, and then release the Z and click the unequip button at the same time. You must be super quick. But if you're wondering why it's called the sus glitch, see for yourself.
well. This is by far the easiest method to get banned. Thousands of players get banned every single day because they clicked on a link some other player sent them. It's called phishing. People make a fake page where you have to log into your Roblox account, but it's actually just a bait that'll make you give them your account details. The player will use your account to cheat on it and have fun and probably get banned. So even if you successfully get your account back, you'll be banned on Bloxfruits Fruits and there's no chance you're ever getting unbanned. Just don't click on any suspicious links. Did you know that the Spike Fruit was previously called Spike Spike? Nowadays it's just Spike, and it's been in the game since update 1, and is more commonly referred to as the Walmart Dough, since it has skills similar to an awakened dough fruit. But this fruit was previously hated due to its high chance of getting it from a Bloxfruits Fruits gacha, while not being very useful. But since then it's improved a lot, getting a large buff in update 17.3. But there's no way you know that back in the day, Control Fruits V move used to shrink after catching a player, and disappeared after the move. I mean, if you notice this detail, you're truly an OG player. Soul Guitar is currently the only mythical gun in the game. The gun uses energy, and before the latest update called Ghost Event, the Soul Guitar was healed from ships. But this no longer happened. Have you ever heard about the glitch that made it possible to kill the beautiful pirate and obtain Rainbow Aura? You had to go to Hydra Island, flash step into a secret room, then use flash step again into beautiful pirate domain. Once you're there, you were able to kill the beautiful pirate. However, this glitch has now been patched, and you will be teleported outside the beautiful pirate domain when attempting to do this glitch if you don't have it unlocked. Most of you know who Besto Friendo is, but I bet you didn't know that this myth says you'll get a mastery on anything you have equipped if Besto Friendo kills your enemy. Hmm, that's too good to be true. Yet somehow it actually works. That's one way to farm your mastery. This may be the most logical myth so far, and it says that bullets don't damage the player that's using a rubber fruit, which makes sense because rubber is supposed to ricochet bullets? I'm curious to find out if this one is actually true. I wasn't able to test it though, so let's see what happened to official newbie. What? No way that actually worked. I expected the bullet would just ricochet off, but it actually just goes through the player. This myth is true. Shout out newbie for taking a bullet. I don't know who figured this out or how they even had this idea, but this myth says that you can only jump in the air once on the second raid platform, which for some reason sounds off. So let's get to the bottom of this by testing it out. There's the first one and I'm able to jump many times up on that one, but let's see if I can do the same on this one. What? I didn't expect that. This myth is actually true. I can bet anything you want that you didn't know about this one. This myth says that if two players do do C moves on each other, no one takes damage. Uh, how is that even possible? No one took any damage. Well, this one's definitely true. This next one will tremendously affect how fast you level up. I'm talking about choosing the right fruit for grinding. I I see so many players using PvP fruits for grinding and they level up so slow. PvP should not be your priority unless you have maxed out your level, so I suggest you focus on leveling up as quickly as possible. The best way to do this is to use grinding fruits. Buddha and Awaken Magma are definitely some of the best grinding fruits out there, but in case you don't have them yet, do your research before you head out to grind next time. This is one of the most brutal mistakes I see new players making all the time. Stop upgrading your stats evenly! Why would you upgrade a stat for something you won't even use in the game? The right way to upgrade your stats is to focus on your health and energy, and then choose what you will use as your main, which is probably fruit. So then just upgrade your fruit stats. This way you won't miss out on anything, and you can always upgrade your other stats later. Most players go crazy when they find out they can find fruits sitting on the ground. But one important thing you should know is that it is extremely hard to find fruits if you're looking on purpose without a fruit notifier add-on. Most of us do find fruits randomly, and it's usually when we least expect it. There's just simply no point in searching for fruits without a notifier. You'll spend a lot of time and the chances you find anything will be super low. Waiting for a boss to respawn in the first sea is understandable, because first sea bosses respawn relatively fast, but waiting for a boss to respawn in a second or third sea isn't what you should do. Instead, after you kill a boss, just hop on another server where that boss will probably be waiting for you. This is something called server hopping, and it can be used for many things, even grinding. And if if you're a new player, you might have never heard of it. Find a boss that gives you a lot of belly, and is pretty easy to kill. Then just server hop and repeat. You will earn a lot of money, level up, and maybe even get a fruit. I wonder how many of you wait for the boss to respawn. Comment down below if you do that. There are many ways in blocks fruits to glitch the game in yourself, but I bet you didn't know about this one. There's a glitch that literally gets you stuck on a boat, and there's no way to get out of this one. I don't know why someone would want to do this, but if you want to try it, you need Portal's World Warp. Then sit in the boat and use the ability. There you go. Now 
now the only way to exit the boat is to exit the entire game. Did you know that Chad is the king of blocks fruits? A secret all of you missed. If you take a closer look at the leg of both the chests and trading tables, you'll be able to see a message saying Chad is the king of blocks fruits. There are rumors that this is a reference to one of the mods, but personally I think they're talking about me. If for some reason you want to be in motion while AFKing, you can do that. Portal's quantum leap ability allows you to create two portals. So place the first one on the ground, look up, and place the other one above the first one. This looks super cool and it's one of the best ways to be AFK while still being stylish. Now all you need to do is jump into one of those. But now try to exit the loop without changing the fruit. Yeah, good luck with that. You're never escaping! This next myth is really important if you're trying to hunt some sea beasts. It says that if you drive somebody else's boat, a sea beast will never spawn. So let's steal someone's boat and see if we can find any sea beasts. Alright, I'm driving this boat and I don't know whose it is. But I've been on the sea for quite some time now. And guess what? Not a single sea beast has spawned which means this is true. So if your friend has a boat that's faster than yours, never borrow it to go sea beast hunting. 90% of the Blocks Fruits community don't know about this myth. It says that you can place landmines in the air if you're standing next to a ledge. At first I thought it's impossible, but then I realized it makes sense. So let's see if it's actually true. And as I expected it actually is. To make things even more interesting, this also works on the sea. This one is for the third sea chads only and it says that if you use portals world warp while entering that teleport machine that teleports you from turtle mansion to the castle on the sea you will crash the entire server let's see if this is true all right we're at the great tree but nothing happened i guess this myth is false which is probably for the best this myth says that if you hold the magma floor and then reset it should stay there forever i don't know how someone came up with this but let's see if it's true all right magma floor hit the reset and bam there it is no way now let's wait and see if it disappears <sighs> It's been hours and it's still there. Myth con- Players have been searching for a way to keep their bounty safe for ages now, and here it is. If you get killed by an NPC or another player kills you, you will obviously lose bounty. But if you want to live yourself right before they kill you, you will get to keep your bounty. It's that simple and you should definitely start practicing this, cause it takes some really quick reflexes. This is a weird one that no one will ever use, but believe it or not, you can use a fruit and its abilities without actually having that fruit. For example, if you have leopard fruit and transform into leopard, then remove that fruit from your inventory at fruit remover, you will still be a leopard without having leopard fruit. I don't know if there's any use in this, but it's good to know it exists. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you have a physical fruit and are about to die and lose it? Well actually, it's super easy to save it. All you need to do is press backspace when you die and you will drop the fruit. Obviously, this is useless if you die in a PvP fight because the other player will just grab it. And if you're quick enough, you can call in a friend for backup and you can drop it to them quickly before you die. But I can never do this because I don't have have any friends. But if there's not enough time for that, at least you will get a second chance to destroy that dude. Did you know that there are secret doors in Marine Fortress? But you'll need a dark plate to open them, so many of you will never get to go through these doors. <laughs> well, unless the admin is your best friend, then he can simply give you one. Buddha's former overpowerment had even more potential. There was the speed glitch everyone with Buddha exploited, and it was too fun. All you had to do was transform into Buddha, hold A or D, and switch on a fighting style. You would instantly be become so fast that literally nothing was faster than you. And remember back in the days, Buddha gave you a 60% speed boost. Now imagine how fast you were able to zoom around the map. Even today, people find ways to do this, but they immediately get patched. Today, there are glitches that can cause a whole server to crash, but we still don't know how to do them properly and crash the entire server. And even if we know, we wouldn't do it, cause why ruin all the fun? But back in the day, there was this promising server crashing glitch that worked every time you tried it. All you had to do was use the control area, hold down Gamma Rush, and switch your fruit. There you go, you literally destroyed the whole server in seconds. Hmm, I wonder if this still works. There is literally no way you ever experience this unless you're an OG player. You see, back in the days, Blocks Fruits admins weren't so strict, and neither were their bosses. Because of this, admins often used to troll servers by spotting dragons with strange abilities, making it rain devil fruits, summoning deadly bosses out of nowhere, and changing the entire map to Brazil colors. OGs know why it's Brazil. Home Glyphs. If you didn't flinch when I said this, you're probably a new player. Home glyphs were large stones with some sort of weird carpet.
of lettuce, and they were added to the game somewhere from update 10 to update 12. Literally big cube shaped rocks with weird symbols. And they weren't in the game long because they were removed in update 13. No one really knows why they were added, nor why they were removed. But rumors spread thinking that this was a hint about an awakening for the rubber fruit. Although most players think they were just easter eggs because of the gamer robot symbol on them. However, we still don't have an awakening for the rubber fruit, so it was probably just an easter egg. We all hate when we run out of air jumps, but luckily there's a glitch that will help you with this. Once you run out of air jumps, just use Leopard's X move. It'll regenerate all of your air jumps. People are saying this is bannable, but let's be real. How will the admin even find out? And if an admin's watching, I would never do something like that. When I say that auto clicker is allowed, I mean it. But you can't use it for AFK grinding anymore. I see more and more people complaining about getting banned after using an auto clicker to AFK grind. So I assume it's just not allowed anymore. You can still use the auto clicker, but if you do so, make sure you're not AFK. And when I think about it, it makes more sense because why would a game allow for people to make money and level up while they're sleeping? And the next one is Control Gamma Rush Glitch. A glitch that allows you to walk with your control area and even move it around. You need to set up your control room and hold control V move for 10 seconds or more until you are able to move. And then there you go. I don't really see a point in this though. And why is it even bannable? You probably won't like this one if you have a bad internet connection. Back in the day, Bloxford's cheat detection was so sensitive it would often ban players just because they had bad ping. Imagine stressing out playing on a bad connection, getting banned, and then also stressing out because you just got banned. I wouldn't be able to stand that. Equip some good fruits for this next one. Castle on the Sea is the main area in the third sea. It's literally where third sea players hang out. It's got everything you can think of, including raids. The raid on this island happens every hour and 15 minutes, and the goal is to protect the castle from pirates that are attacking it. These pirates are galley pirates, and once they start spawning, you'll quickly realize their level is way higher than normal. Why did I say the factory raid is more fair than this raid? It's because here, the player who kills the last pirate is the one who gets a random blocks fruit. This means you can literally run away from the pirates the entire time, not dealing any damage. But if you kill the last pirate, you'll get a fruit. To make this even more unfair, if someone gets the last pirate to a single hit, and you just deal the final blow, you'll still be the one getting the fruit. This next one is once again a raid, but this time a raid not many players have faced. I'm talking about the ship raid. That's also known as the defeat the brigade raid. Keep in mind that this raid cannot happen in the first sea. Unlike the other raids on this list, this one happens randomly as you're riding in your boat. When you're out there on the sea, a bunch of ships may spawn, two or three to be more precise. Two of them are always brigade ships, and the third one is a grand brigade, but it doesn't spawn every time. They will constantly pursue you and shoot cannonballs at your ship, so there are only two outcomes. Either you absolutely destroy their ships, or they're going to destroy your ship. In case a grand brigade spawns, I recommend you first destroy the normal brigades, and then focus on destroying the grand brigade. Once you defeat all of them, you may get a blocks fruit. I'm saying may because it's not actually guaranteed you'll get it each time, and there are a few factors. The sea you're in being the key one. However, even if you don't get a fruit, I'm sure you'll be satisfied with fragments. If you're in the second sea, grand brigade will never spawn, and you'll get 50 fragments for each brigade you sink. But if you're in the third sea, you'll get 25 fragments for each brigade you sink, 75 fragments for the grand brigade, as well as three fools too and obviously a small chance of a random fruit. Have you ever got a fruit from a ship raid? Most of you know that you can use magma fruit to walk on lava, but some players are saying you can do the same with the leopard fruit. There's no way this is true, but I guess let's see. Are you serious? How did I know this earlier? Another true myth. I heard that apparently if you subscribe to the channel in the next 10 seconds, the next fruit you roll will be extra good. Let's test this out. And wait, what? That's actually really good. Comment down below and let me know what you got. If for whatever reason you wanted to bring a saber expert outside of the house using portal, you can actually do so. Or at least that's what this myth says. Let's see if this actually works. And dang this one is true too. Run he's too strong. Just kidding he's not. This one says that if you use a spring leaf in a well known frog room, you'll start bouncing off the walls like crazy. And oh my god this one is true. I had to exit the game to stop bouncing. Myth confirmed. Locksmith is an NPC that allows you to upgrade your swords and guns. But I often see new players players upgrading literally useless items such as katana or any kind of gun. This is a big no-no because you will spend your material upgrading items that you probably won't use in the future. Instead, you should save your materials and upgrade the items you know you'll stick to until reaching max level. A massive mistake new players make is not dashing while fighting. This is extremely important because it allows you to hit your enemy and then quickly dash away from them so they don't hit you. It'll be your friend because your defense stat is probably still low. And for someone like me, it's great because I don't have any friends. If you 
you've watched some of my videos, you know how much I love Buddha and how OP it is. And this is actually one of the biggest mistakes players make. I'm talking about grinding without a Buddha fruit. There are some good grinding fruits out there, such as Lighter Magma, but none of these can compare with Buddha at all. Its range and speed are truly a must have if you want to reach max level fast, even though it costs 1.2 million belly or 1,650 fragments. I promise you that it will pay for itself in no time, but if you're still poor, ask your friend to buy it for you. That's exactly how I got my Buddha fruit. Yeah, I'm lying again. I don't have any friends. One of the most common things players do in blocks fruits is ignoring sea beasts. Most of you do this because you think they're too OP and impossible to kill. Sure, they are pretty difficult, but you shouldn't be ignoring them, and especially don't avoid them once you see them spawn. That's because they don't spawn very often, so once they spawn, you're literally missing out on a huge reward. A lot of belly, fragments, and even a chance of getting fruit or an accessory. A Fist of Darkness is valuable, and it's just another reason why you shouldn't be avoiding sea beasts. Trust me, this one might save your life one day. A ghoul mask is a must-have rare item, and not having it is a massive mistake. This mask gives you the ability to gain health equivalent to a portion of the damage you deal with melee attacks known as life leech. When having it equipped, you'll gain health equivalent to 10% of your damage dealt to players, and 2.5% against NPCs. On top of that, ghoul mask also gives you 35% more running speed and 500 energy. It's literally a must-have. Do you know that fruit won't disappear if you drop it onto a wall? Instead, it will land at the top of the wall. That's pretty weird. Blocks Fruits developers really said no to the laws of physics. But if you're creative enough, this would be a good way to prank your friends. Get your most expensive fruit and drop it into the wall. Now your friends will think you literally wasted the fruit, but actually it's on top of the building. Completely safe. This next one makes no sense. Did you know that you can use an ice skate to skate on lava and not take any damage? Like, how is this even possible? Wouldn't the lava melt the ice? Lava is clearly stronger than ice. So why doesn't it melt? I guess the devs just didn't think about this one. This one's not a secret, but definitely something many of you didn't know. When you have no fruits, you can swim without taking any damage. So now I have a question. Is the Blocks Fruits world jealous because we got its fruit and now it wants to kill us? It just seems that way. Did you know that the rarest thing in Blocks Fruits is leopard fruit spawning in every server at once? It's so rare that the chances of me finding a friend are higher than this happening. And that's about 0%. If you completed the quest I'm about to tell you, you're lucky my friend. Oh, you're not my friend. I don't have any friends. Anyways, in early 2022, players found a mistake developers made, and a really big one. One of the developers added an extra zero, and now Amazon Area 2 quest giver NPC gave players 645 million XP instead of 64.5 million, which was the amount he was supposed to. Just imagine how easy it was to reach max level by exploiting this. Unfortunately, it was patched shortly after being discovered. I wonder how many players are only at max level because of this. Back in July of 2019, a player called Beckboy found one of the craziest glitches ever. He somehow accidentally pressed C while having a chopped fruit equip, then switched it to his sword, and he started flying. But not like the usual flying glitches. This one was actually controllable, and it was way faster and a better way of transportation than light fruit. Anyone who got caught using this glitch was banned, so it's definitely a good thing they patched it. Over a year ago, Blocks Fruits players found one of the most powerful glitches in the game, and safe to say it had to be patched as soon as possible. You were literally able to get any item in the entire game for completely free. You just needed enough money to buy that item, and all you had to do is reset your character right before you click buy. Once you respawned, you'd have the same amount of money, but also the new item. This even worked on fighting styles, and let players get way too overpowered without paying a penny. Have you been playing long enough to remember this? There's no way you know what a gum bazooka is. Gum bazooka was the bazooka's X move, but what was interesting about it is that a glitch allowed you to be faster than anything. You had to press X and then quickly talk to the fruit dealer and equip an ice fruit. With this glitch, you were able to travel from island to island in seconds. How would you use this glitch? Let me know in the comments below. A giant diamond player was one of the most exploited glitches back in the day. This glitch enabled you to become a big diamond man for as long as you were in the server or until you die. You needed to eat Buddha fruit, transform, and then eat diamond fruit and activate the encrust ability. This glitch was automatically patched when in update 17.5. Three, devs made it impossible to eat another fruit if you were in the transform. Why did they do this? It was so cool. Did you know that paw fruit doesn't exist anymore? Well, sort of. In update 20, paw fruit was renamed to pain fruit due to copyright reasons. But the moveset remained the same, with the only difference being the word paw switched out for pain. But I think pain fruit sounds way cooler, because paw fruit sounds so friendly and not intimidating at all. You're an OG if you ever had a soul fruit in your inventory, because it got removed in the update 17. 
19.3.5. The soul fruit was a natural fruit that used to cost 3.4 million belly. It was one of the 13 fruits that glowed in its physical form. And the highest move required 350 mastery. And the reason it got removed was once again copyright. Nowadays, it's slightly reworked and called spirit fruit. Which one do you like more? I can bet my friend's life you've never heard about the NORP NPC. Only because I don't have any friends. But that's not important now. NORP was an NPC that could be found in the cafe or the mansion in the third sea. In exchange for 3,000 fragments, he would change your race randomly. You could get four races from him. Human, angel, shark, or rabbit. Unfortunately, you can no longer find Norp, but you can find Tor, who is Norp's long lost brother, I guess, because they do very similar things. Did you know that there's a way to make your head 10 times bigger in Blocks Fruits? And it's bannable too. All you need to do is get your Buddha fruit, head over to the Awakening Expert located in the mansion on the third sea, unawaken your Buddha, transform into Buddha, then talk to the Awakening Expert once again. Awaken your Buddha and transform again. This time only your head will be transformed and you'll be walking around with a huge head. This looks around the size of my brain. Think twice before using this one in PvP. Giant Race allows you to become the size of an awakened Buddha user and use a different fruit at the same time. But it also has some major issues itself, including getting banned if abused in PvP. In order to actually get banned, you need a permanent Buddha fruit and another permanent fruit of your choice. You'll also need to complete at least one Buddha raid because you will need a Z move for this one. Use Z move, open up a perma fruit shop, find your other permanent fruit, and while clicking on equip, immediately press Z again. Now you will have the abilities of two fruits. It's normal to see a lot of messages saying error. Disable your transformation first. And don't worry about that. But you should definitely be worried about getting banned. Alright, so apparently there's this glitch with a catch developers make just to see if someone will try to use it in order to get a better fruit. I don't want you to get banned, so I can't tell you everything. But there's a code you'll need to write in the chat, and then roll a fruit. Hmm, will this work? Well, it definitely works, and now I'm definitely not going to share the code with you. And be careful next time you're typing in a code. Cause who knows, maybe you'll type in the wrong one. Did you know that you can get banned if you choose a bad name for your crew? While you're making a crew, make sure to choose a proper name for it. Because I have seen leaders of crews getting banned just because of how they name their crew. Even if it's not offensive at all. How would you name your crew if you couldn't get banned? Comment down below. The next way of getting fruits is to just steal them. Okay, not really stealing. But when a player dies, he will drop a fruit he had but wasn't in his inventory at that moment. So all you need to do is pick it up from the ground. This can also be a good farming method. Just go around the server and watch players PvP. Stay near them and once one of them dies, he'll probably drop a fruit. Pick it up and run away! Because if he comes back, he's gonna be looking for revenge! Since Blocks Fruits was first made, there's been tons of in-game events. Ranging from Christmas to Valentine's events. Many of you, however, don't know that these events sometimes mean free fruits. For example, on November 29, 2022, a one-week 10 billion visits milestone event started. During this event, there was a temporary currency called confetti, which could be obtained from the shop NPCs or chests from the third sea. Once you've got enough confetti, you are able to exchange them for fruits and XP boosts. I wish this was still in the game. And the last event that took place in Blocks Fruits was the Valentine's event that released in February 2023. But by the time this video's out, there may even be a new one. Who knows? That's super cool. I feel like you should have known this one by now, but if you didn't, now you do. But there's one more NPC you can get a fruit from, and many of you actually don't know about him. His name is Death King, and he's located in Massolium, which can be found in the graveyard in the haunted castle in the third sea. He's considered to be a great NPC because you can get fruit from him and then pay him in bones. This sounds way too good to be true, but unfortunately it's not. I mean it is, but only during the Halloween events. He used to sell a kitsune fruit, which is the most expensive fruit in the entire game. It costs 8 million, and that's if you're lucky enough to even find it in the stock in the first place. Demand for this fruit is crazy high due to its grinding and PvP potential. And there's one more way it can be obtained, and that's through Kitsune Shrine. Kitsune Kitsune Shrine is an NPC added in the Kitsune update, and he's located on the Kitsune Island, which can only be found during a full moon. But it's not going to be easy. Don't say I didn't warn you. Some of you already know that you can make boats fly with control fruit. Well, what if I told you this next myth says you can fly in the boat using Flamingo? You need to spawn your best friendo facing a boat, and he will instantly sit in it. Then just activate F move, and as you and your best friendo fly, your boat will follow you. Well, at least that's what this myth says. Are you serious? How is this possible? That's a another true myth. This next one says that you can grab factory core with the C move. Well, something happened, but we didn't grab the core? That one is busted. Apparently, there's a secret entrance to a door under this waterfall in the third sea. I've literally never seen this before, so there's no way it exists. And wait, what? How did I not know about this? Another myth while we're here is that 
supposedly you can just break down this giant stone door. And there's an entire temple on the inside? Why has nobody ever told me this was here? Myth confirmed. You definitely didn't know about this one. Boats in the second sea are slightly faster than boats in the first sea. And boats in the third sea are way faster than boats in the first and second sea. This is super useful to know, but useless if you're still a noob. But still, light holds its title as the fastest way of traveling in the entire game. Did you know this? Comment down below. Did you know that you can destroy this bridge in the second sea? Or rip it in half to be more precise? You'll need control fruit and its X move. Just stand on the middle of the bridge, make a control area, and levitate it into the air. And boom, you just destroyed the bridge. But people will still be able to use it, as long as they know how to jump. I wish I knew this years ago. If you go over to the bar area at the sea castle and talk to the bartender, he'll tell you about some real and some not real blocks fruit spawning at the sea. And no, he's not just talking nonsense. Real fruits do randomly spawn. Head over to the Great Tree Island and search for a real fruit. And comment down below if you've ever found a real fruit in Blocks Fruits. If you take a look at this house, it looks just like any other. But this house has a secret. It's a perfect hiding spot because you can literally walk into it. This is a great way to prank your friends. And also a great place to hide if someone's chasing you. I bet you didn't know about this one, even though it's logical when you really think about it. Some bushes and Blocks Fruits will slow you down if you dash through them. I'm not sure if this is just a glitch or it's actually meant to exist. Maybe it'll get patched in a future update. Those dark blades with white hockey look way too cool. Have you ever wondered how to get one? Well, first, you obviously need a dark blade. And then, head over to Graveyard, where you will be able to find a Rip Indra NPC who will change your dark blade's hockey color. How cool is that? It's been ages since we started hearing rumors about a new weather system. And finally, it's here. Well, almost. We're still limited with information, but we now know this system will be used in Tiki Outposts and Sea Events. So does this mean it'll always rain in Tiki Outposts? Who knows? There's a leak that shows rainy weather, but keep in mind that developers also promised us for extreme weather conditions, such as storms, fog, whirlpools, and so on. I can't wait for this to be released. Sure, those freshly reworked swords look fantastic, but a new sword would be even more interesting. And it is! I present to you Shark Anchor, a legendary sword you can only get by being the last person to deal damage to a terror shark with an anchor attached, but only with a monster magnet that can be crafted from the shark hunter. It deals a lot of damage, and all of its moves are AoE, and they deal damage to multiple enemies at the same time. Its Z move makes you spin the sword around on a chain, catch any enemies near you, and then toss them. When your enemy hits an obstacle or reaches its maximum distance, a water eruption spawns below him and then launches him directly into the sky. That's a crazy one even though there's a short cooldown. It still breaks instinct, and its X move launches you forward, performing an uppercut with the sword. Enemies you hit with this move will be dragged along and slammed down, creating an anchor symbol on the ground if performed close to it. It's also recognizable by creating a pink shatter and red slash effect. And apparently it deals more damage if used against big targets. Update 20 also released four new accessories, ranging from hats to necklaces. The first one is called Leviathan Crown, and it's a legendary accessory that's more useful than you might expect. It gives you 12% more damage on melee attacks, 35% more damage on sea events, speeds up health regeneration by 25%, and gives you 40% higher chances of dropping materials from sea events. It even gives you an extra instinct dodge. You can craft it at the Beast Hunter NPC, but the next accessory is Leviathan Shield, which is a mythical accessory that boosts your defense against melee, sword, and gun attacks by 15%, boosts your defense on sea events by 30%, gives you 90% more protection against sea damage, and 1,250 health points. This is so OP! But then comes the Terror Jaw. It's a legendary accessory that grants you 10% more damage on sword attacks, 10% cooldown reduction on any attack, 20% defense on sea events, and 200 energy and 200 health points. You can obtain it from the Shark Hunter and Tiki Outpost. But if you want to be a bit faster, save those shark teeth for the Shark Tooth Necklace. It's a rare accessory that gives you 50% faster sprint speed, plus 10 dash distance, and 25% more damage on sea events. You can obtain it from the same NPC that sells you Terror Jaw, but it's way cheaper. You'll only need one mutant tooth and five shark teeth. Now, you may be wondering what all these materials I'm talking about are. They've also been added into Update 20, and here's a list of them. Piranha Wing, Fool's Gold, Leviathan Heart, Leviathan Scale, Mutant Tooth, Shark Tooth, Terrorized Monster Magnet. To obtain any of these new materials, you must be above level 2450, or in other words, on Tiki Outpost Island. Once you're there, you need to get in a boat and travel at least 2,700 meters away from it, because that's where you'll hit threat level 6. The higher the threat level, the more sea events will take place, which means you'll face more NPCs, bosses, and enemies from whom you can get these new materials. Keep in mind that as the threat level rises, the enemies you face will also become stronger, so don't immediately go for the highest threat level until you're confident in yourself. To obtain a shark tooth, you will need to kill sharks. Luckily, you can easily identify them underwater. 
here. You can get piranha wings from piranhas in the sea, obviously. Mutant tooth and terrorize are obtained by defeating the terror shark raid boss that spawns during sea events. And I already explained how the leviathan heart is obtained. All you have to do is get out to sea, but equip yourself with some nice fruits because you'll need them. Trust me. Another addition in update 20 is four new titles. The first one is Terror Bringer. You earn it by defeating 10 terror sharks. The second new title is Serpent Slayer, and we still don't have a lot of information about this one. We only know that its color is dark blue, and you get it when you kill Levi a certain amount of times. The third new title is Abyss Tamer. You earn it when you clear 50 sea events. And finally, the last one is Nautical Bane, which is just Abyss Tamer, but buffed up, because you'll need to clear 200 sea events to earn this one, and show off its cyan color. To figure out how far you're away from the Tiki Outpost, or in which threat level you are, developers added the Danger Meter. It's a purple ring around your compass, and in my opinion, it's a game changer. Beside all these new additions and reworks, developers also focused on fixing a bunch of bugs and glitches. Unfortunately, some useful and fun glitches that worked before may not work now. But hey, at least our game won't be buggy. Sea events won't spawn on islands anymore. Chests won't be floating in the sea. You won't be able to see Red Barrier in the sky. Kushida door quest will open normally from now on. And many more boat and fruit issues the game had or fixed. There's a myth that says if you hold a gun and then switch to a different gun, your arms will be stuck in a weird position. And that's also true. But it looks super weird. Did you know that you can use an admin command to spawn infinite fruits? Well, that's what this myth says. But I need to confirm this for myself. If this works, I'm gonna be so rich. Can you imagine? Alright, if we type in the code admin spawn fruits equals true, it should work. And nothing happened. Myth busted. Most of you probably didn't know this, but there's a myth that says you can jump with a spike ball. What? All of a sudden, Blocks Fruits looks like some sort of racing game. Myth confirmed. Have you ever been on the North Pole Island? If not, that's probably because you missed it during the Christmas event. It was pretty easy to find, even though it was supposed to be a special island. It was located right next to the Frozen Village, so all you need to do is simply go to the Frozen Village, look to the right of it, and there you would find the North Pole Island. When it comes to the Second Sea, it's near the Cursed Ship. I wonder if this island will actually come back at some point. The North Pole Island that used to exist was filled with interesting stuff. One of those being presents, an item that was earned by destroying a big present that spawns on the North Pole at the center. You didn't have to break the big present in order to get the gift, as it used to open on its own after a few seconds, and release a bunch of small gifts depending on how many players were surrounding it. Each player would only be able to get one gift each hour, and opening a gift would give one player a random blocks fruit, but also a small chance of granting a mythical accessory called the Holiday Cloak. The present event used to start every hour at the North Pole, but as the island was removed, the present was too. I really hope this comes back one day. Valentine's Day isn't too far away, and hopefully we'll get the chance to buy the Cupid's Coat once again. The Cupid's Coat was a legendary accessory you were able to obtain by purchasing it from the Valentine's event shop for 750 hearts. This coat used to give you quite a few buffs. 12.5% more damage on fruits and sword attacks, 8% defense against any attack, and 400 energy and 600 health. Since the Valentine event ended long ago, you're not able to purchase it anymore, and it's considered removed. I've never seen someone wearing it either. Did you know about this? Let me know down below. You probably know all about the ghost fruit, but I bet you don't know about its father called Revive Fruit. Revive Fruit was an uncommon natural fruit that cost 550,000 belly. This fruit was able to revive the player by using C move after being killed, and it was the only fruit with this ability. Still, it was very unused due to the fact that it had only two attack moves, and both of them were only useful on rare occasions. In the update 20.1, this fruit was reworked as a ghost fruit, and I must say it doesn't remind me of Revive Fruit at all. So was this really removed? Let me know what you think. Have you ever heard about the NPC that got removed three times already? The Magic Elf is a limited time NPC who sells several boosts and items in exchange for candy. It was added in update 13 before being removed in update 14, and then re-added in the first part of update 17, and once again removed in the second part of update 17. Last time it was re-added was in update 18, and then it got removed on March 1st of 2023. I think that's the last time we had an opportunity to see Magic Elf, because something tells me he's not coming back. Do you want to send your opponent into a black hole? This is what you need to do. First, get an Awaken Dark's World of Darkness move. Hold the move for at least 35 seconds or more, and when you release it, the ball will be above you forever. You can stack this forever, and when you finally release it, your opponent might be facing a real black hole. Now, if they report you, don't say it's my fault you got banned. You wouldn't believe how powerful Buddy Sword actually is. There's a Buddy Sword glitch that lets you auto-aim enemies. To do this, you need to hold the X move and hold the minimize down to the screen, and then release everything at once. Now your buddy sword will lock onto enemies, which is literally a 
cheat. This will easily get you banned if an admin sees you using it, and it will probably also get you reported. If you ever wanted to have infinite agility, this is what you should do. Get a rabbit v3 and barrier f move. First activate agility, then hold the barrier f move and that's it. This will keep the speed boost from agility until you run out of energy, or until you release barriers f move. Most players don't know that you can actually equip two fighting styles at the same time. If you want to blow your friend's mind, do this by equipping either the dark step or dead step fighting style, and make sure to have the final ability unlocked. Once you've done this, you can now use the overheat ability, which will set your legs on fire. Then just head over to an ability teacher and get the shark man or electric fighting style. Equip it and now you have double powers. 